We're just skimming the end of the component now. It's got some oil on which is why the swarf is sticking to it. And I'm just taking multiple white passes along that end. Well, it, it came away from the end by a millimetre then, then uh, rapided back towards us. Now it's put on a cut of one millimetre uh, extra than before, and now we're taking another cut. We're just taking a climb milling cut to finish now, and then we're going to go over to the left hand side and start um, cutting one of the steps. So that should be to length now. Now what it's doing is it's stopped and this is because I've programmed in a um, momentary stop and I'm going to check the overall length and uh, that way I'll know that the tool diameter is set right. If I get a length that is incorrect I can go into my offset and change it so let's see what we've got. So I'm aiming for 58.65 don't ask why um, and I've got 58.69 so I'm, uh, I'm happy enough with that, um, the ends of these go into fresh air so uh, that'll be fine. So now all I do is I press cycle start again and it'll jump back into the program. I wanted just to pick up on this point because it's a fairly fundamental CNC uh, concept. If you imagine at the moment we have our tool here. So the edge of it is right in line to cut uh, the piece to this length. If the length is incorrect, say it's too long, there's an easy fix. Rather than going back into the program and changing um, the length or the dis distance, what I can do is change uh, what I'm going to call my tool diameter offset. So remember at the start I set up uh, the diameter for the tool. What I can do is I can measure it and go back into the offsets page and change the diameter of this tool to account for the discrepancy. So say the part's too long, I can tell the machine that the tool is smaller and then the machine will think the tool is this big. But in actual fact, the tool is this big. So when it moves the tool back up to this line and brings it for a second pass, it should cut off an extra bit. Likewise, um, if the part had come out too short, um, I could, although this component may be scrap, I could go back uh, adjust the tool and the part should come out bigger. I'd, make, I'd tell the machine that the tool was bigger then and it would then come further this way because it thinks that's the cutting edge when actually that's the cutting edge. So if that makes any sense uh, that's one way of altering uh, part lengths without altering the program. The reason you might want to do that instead of alter the program is you may have lots of steps. So for, for instance here I've got three edges I'm cutting. So if, um, if the tool diameter is wrong and giving me wrong lengths all three steps will be out of position. So rather than change all three dimensions and the program to try and make up for it, I can just change the tool and then we're working to the numbers that are correct and the tool's giving us the right size piece. Um, one other bit to say on this is, imagine you're making a part and it's, um, oh, say you've been working on it for a while and it, there's one bit of it and you're very keen not to scrap it. If you wanted to be cautious, you could tell the machine that the tool is bigger than it actually is and it will then stand off 
a little bit and it gives you a chance to measure and accurately adjust your offset to bring the part into the tolerance you want. So if that makes any sense, that's just a little CNC uh, bit of information. And we're going to cut the step. Just going to keep going through this um, stepping uh, routine until we get down to depth, and uh, then it will move along to the other one. So I'll, I'll skip all the metal cutting before you get bored. Okay, we've just finished that step off. I did three passes at about uh, 0.5 of a mil deep each time. Now we're going on to our next step. And after that, we're on to spot drilling. Okay, we've got our step on each end and the overall pieces to length. So now I'm going to do a tool change and we will finish by spot drilling. We are now looking up at the spindle of the machine and um, I believe this is a BT20. I'm familiar with the BT40s and 50s, but I believe this is a BT20. Uh, up there we have a lever, and I'm going to pull that lever and it will operate a mechanism inside which will release the tool. And uh, when I get the tool out I'll be able to show you how that works. I go up and pull the lever and it releases very nicely um, this little tool. So there we've got a, a taper and a pull stud on the end. So the mechanism that that lever actuates uh, pulls on the pull stud uh, pulling the uh, taper in tight. So I'll swap out for a spot drill now. And again, uh, we, we have to align a tang with a little slot. I don't know if it's called a tang or not actually, but anyway that's in now. So that uh, tool changing couldn't be simpler. I'm bringing our spot drill in here with a drop of oil. A spot drill, by the way, is just a 90 degree drill, if you like. And uh, it's just a straightforward drilling cycle. Oh well, we've had a slight mishap. For anyone that didn't see, our uh, spot drill slipped into, into the holder a bit and uh, I can't blame anyone else. Basically I assumed it was um, locked up and it, it wasn't locked up uh, particularly tight so when some force was applied it slipped inwards. Um, I have to head back for a, a week of work uh, pretty soon so I don't have time to run this again. But in a couple of weeks I should have a video starting to assemble the um, 
uh, suspension system on my loco that I've been working on recently with those fabrications and split journal bearings um, so you should see the six finished parts in there but otherwise I hope this has been a small insight into how this machine operates and a bit of information on how I set it up and uh, uh, depending on the interest in this video I'll do um, more in-depth videos on this kind of CNC uh, so otherwise uh, at least with CNC we know the program is running right so I can just get more material and keep running through or uh, rerun this one again uh, while I do something more interesting so as I said hopefully it's been interesting uh, thanks for watching and see you on the next video